Can you tell us how your daughters inspired the frozen world? Well, they really, it was Chris Buck originally who inspired us, and he showed us this beautiful piece of artwork where Elsa was throwing snow up and Anna was there completely delighted. Like, it was the best thing she'd ever seen. And we witnessed that in our own two girls because we, they are four years apart and the younger one thinks that the older one hung the moon to this day. And I was like, I wanna write about that. That's awesome. Um, can you just, uh, change is a big theme in this film. Can you talk to us about that in the song, Some Things Never Change? Oh, um, well, Some Things Never Change is a song that we had to write in order to reconnect with the characters in the present day. Um, in their happily ever after from the first film still. So they're, they're all relatively happy. Uh, and Anna especially, is um, it, she, she's gotten everything she wanted at the end of the first film. So it starts with Anna. And then we go around each character. We see Kristoff, we see Elsa, and we see the town. And we see that maybe they aren't all unhappy, but there's something restless and there's things that need to happen in order for them all to move on with their lives. And in the very end, we, need, we see Anna needs to move on too. Um, but we wanted to give, you know, reconnect with the characters we love with a song that, um, that makes us feel back in Arendelle. Um, the song Into the Unknown, um, three parts to it. Um, what, um, what does it tell us about Elsa at this point? Um, what does she learn and what does Adina Menzel bring to the character Elsa in that song? Um, the first thing we learn is that there's a voice calling Elsa and the voice, we use something that's been used in music for hundreds of years called the DSRA. Do you want to play it, Bobby? And you want to tell them a little bit about DSRA? Well, it, it, it means danger or, or death. Uh, it comes from ancient uh, scripture from the church um, and lots of composers have used it. We also combine it with this um, style of singing from Norway called kuning which is a shepherdess call to the cattle. And each, you know, the cattle follow the call home. And in a way, that's what's happening with Elsa. That's right, so she's hearing this voice but doesn't want to tell anyone because she's worried about rocking the boat. Um, and she knows that there's something in her that, that feels like she wants to answer it. And so at three in the morning, she has a dialogue, and at first she's resisting it, so if you want to give the three in the morning feeling of, uh, so. I can hear you, but I won't. Some look for trouble, while others don't. So it has that kind of feeling. But then, as she starts to give in to that voice, it gets this drive and starts to seduce her. So do you want to go, I've had, the, I've had yeah. my, but, um, I've had my adventure. Yeah, my adventure. Thank you. I've had my adventure. I don't need something new. I'm afraid of what I'm risking if I follow you into the unknown. Um, what's interesting about that is, in the unknown, it's an octave, safe boundary, do, do, we know this. Into the unknown, it's you're stepping out of the boundary into something else. And then, into the unknown, you've just blown the coop. You've just gone way beyond the boundaries, and so it mirrors what's happening in the story. You to the hair on the back of your neck standing. Last thing, real quick. Uh, as I say in the theater, send them out humming. What are they going to walk out humming from Frozen 2? <laughs> that is up to them. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, we, we've been humming them all, and we hear from Jen Lee and Chris Buck that animators and people at Disney who are working on the film all have different favorites, uh, but that they all agree that, the, that this one's better than the last one. 